but we're gonna start with the Cowboys, everybody. Do we wanna start optimistically? I don't know what to do with this team. Cowboys fans, they've been waiting for news, good news, additions, things happening, shaking, windows, blah, 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 blah. We got news, but the news was not great. They announced the retirement of former starting linebacker Leighton Vander Esch. Medical reasons, not great. He's walking away from the game. Released, guys. It's also been reported they've agreed to a restructure with Dak that will save them a lot of money. No! No, four million against the cap. He looks set to play out the final year of his deal and it squeaks them, squeaky squeaky under the cap. Ugh, what? There's no way around it. We, Hamilton and I, we were like pulling our hair out, trying to figure out like, how do we make this optimistic? There has to be good here. Like what is the goodness in this? What is the lesson in all of this? There's just no way around it. The Cowboys have been hit hard. This offseason, if you take a look, Dan Quinn, he goes to take the commander's head coaching up. I know he didn't leave a great taste in the mouths of Cowboys fans as the season ended, but he held this team together. He's very well liked by Jerry Jones. Players turn up for him. He's gone. That's a big deal. Potential Hall of Famer Tyron Smith, he's a Jet. Pollard, see ya. They need a new starting center. What are they doing? They have three defensive starters to replace now, too. The only addition they've made so far is linebacker, who I love, Eric Kendricks. Let's see if his third destination in three years is going to suit him and that team. A veteran in that defensive locker room? Great, great. Ben Solak joins me. He's uh, with the Ringer. He was here last week. He poignantly pointed out that there may not be much more a coming down the road because Jerry Jones is sitting at his desk, his mahogany, bookshelves, all that, writing big paychecks for Micah Parsons, for one of the best to do it right now, C.D. Lamb. They're set for extensions. And Jerry's quote, guys, from Senior Bowl, going all in, of course, it's not aging well, as, as the, uh, you know, sports shows will tell you. <laughs> I feel like a lot of A-blocks covering the Cowboys. This is my first A-block with the Cowboys because, uh, you know, where have all the Cowboys gone? It's a great lower third, you guys. <laughs> That's effing great. It's great. Who sings that? Oh, I wish I knew on the top of my head. Who? Paula Cole's great, you know? We got Dolly. We've got a little Jack White back here. And now we've got Paula Cole as part of the conversation. That's that's how far you've plummeted right now, 2024, Dallas Cowboys. And it's not only the, like it, what's going on you know, under the big screen at Jerry World. It's everything going on outside of it in your division as you're sitting there and having to watch Philly load up trying to snatch that crown back um, while not being able to do much as a Cowboys organization, listen, I don't expect this team to fall apart. I really don't. They should still be as good and easily snag another playoff spot, but it's hard to say that they're going to do better than they did last season. And, and, and so we're just the definition of insanity. By the way, the DAC restructure didn't come with an extension that could have freed up, you know, it did come with one that could have freed up even more space, okay? They s could still work this out eventually, uh, where we are right now with free agency pretty much in the rear view, I don't know how much of a difference it would make, okay? This is looking like Dak's final shot to prove he can push this team where it needs to go into Super Bowl contention. If it doesn't happen this year, we are setting up, folks, for a massive overhaul in 2025. On the flip side, if Dak crushes it and he does his thing and he takes the boys to the playoffs and CeeDee Lamb's best wide receiver in the game and all that, he could be in line for a record-setting deal if this cat hits the open market. The Cowboys, always intriguing, but this, the only thing to say about this right now is it's lackluster, it's not very buzzy, but it is the most consequential season I can remember as far as what the future holds for this entire organization. Okay, from that's all I got from the Cowboys. That was a heavy, heavy lift for me. Um, from the Cowboys to uh, another team, we didn't. I did not. We did not service. We did not service through our weeks back for free agency, and and that is the Dolphins. Okay. The Miami Dolphins, they have undergone some huge changes as well. The difference is Miami has done a lot of work to replace pieces that they've had to blow kisses and bid adieu to, okay? If you look at, it's been a wild shuffle 
in Miami. Uh, they got jiggy with it, as it were. Um, it started with DC Vic Fangio, Paula Cole, Animal Smith. Why not? Um, Vic Fangio bounces for the Eagles. They replaced him with Anthony Weaver from that Baltimore staff. He's very talented. I can't wait to see that. They've lost Christian Wilkins. That's huge. David Howard, man, Van Ginkle. Uh, he leaves as well. But they have brought in former All-Pros, Jordan Poyer. I like it. Interdivision stuff. So so hot right now. So on trend. Um, Shaq Barrett, he fills the void. The Dolphins have lost 52% of their defensive snaps from a year ago. That's kind of glaring. It's by far the highest percentage in the league, y'all. But... I like the pieces they brought in. I'm not sure it's going to be worse for them, okay? And remember, their star pass rushers, Bradley Chubb, Jalen Phillips, they both missed the end of the season. Maybe some mismanagement. We're not going to get into that. That's in the past. But they'll be back at some point this year also. And the key pieces on that ex explosive offense, they're all back too. Not to mention, we haven't hit the draft yet. I'm excited about the Dolphins are going to be putting on the field this season, even though... Not much buzz, not much attention elsewhere right now. We'll give it to them on the Up and Adams program because the way last season sort of soured the way people viewed this team, I'm not going to let that be the lingering vibe. I'm not going to fall into that. Um, and people want to put it all on Tua and Mike McDaniel. Um, the reality is the Dolphins were completely ravaged by injuries down the stretch and into that playoff loss to KC, who, by the way, ran through every other team that everyone loves. So, like, we were so quick to clown on the Dolphins while they ate everyone up on their way to win another Super Bowl. So, by the wild card game, more than half of the starting defense was out. Tyreek and Waddle hobbling about. Um, these aren't excuses. This is a subjective fact, and it's irresponsible. It's irresponsible for anybody out there to say this team isn't. Um, or is we don't know we don't know right now what they're we don't know what they're capable of achieving okay based on how the year unfolded and how it went last year so um, big one for the Dolphins and Tua by the way Tua ding 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 fifth year option and at some point they have to come up with bigger results for him of course from him um, but we're not abandoning this team give me a healthy Dolphin squad and then we can talk about what they can and cannot do.